Hey guys, for this video, we're gonna take a look at and install this VO switch in my Jeep. I was looking for a good way to add switches, specifically for me for lights, but there's a variety of things you could use these for. And a lot of the options I wasn't happy with, and I don't wanna do anything that's a permanent butchering of the Jeep. And I really liked this set of switches because it blends in really well with the vehicle. If you haven't seen where these install, this goes to the top portion of your grab bar and it's just going to sit in it blends in really well it's easy to reach and it'll light up it's got a little backlight to it and it's going to work really well from what i've seen other people's i'm going to be happy with it i think you'll be happy with it if you decide to get one and then this box here is what actually is going to control everything the switch is going to connect through this cable to the box and this mounts directly on top of your battery we're going to do a whole installation video so we can see how it goes and uh how easy or difficult it is to do but once we look inside here you can see we have actual relays there those are 40 amp relays and then it comes with 30 amp fuses of course depending on what you're using you may pop one of those out and lower it but 30 amps is the max so keep that in mind when thinking of what you want to run to this obviously these wires over here are going to the battery and then each of these screws have a positive and a negative obviously for each set up here and then these plugs you just pop out to run your wires to keep it waterproof. So, I mean, it looks really well made. First impressions are pretty good. That little piece of tape was my addition because I had to cover their stuff for this. But uh, it doesn't come that way. And uh, then you get, whoa, as I knock this over, instructions and some tie wraps, wire connectors, things of that nature. Let's go install it. So for the first step, we have to install this power module right on top of the battery. You can see this bracket has two holes, lines up with these along the top of the fender. We need to remove this bolt here, and then they supply us with this other bolt here, and it goes in right there. There's already threads down there, so just remove this, slap this guy on top. Step one done. Second step, they want you to get the control wire, run it along this channel by the firewall right over to this corner here, take off this piece, lower the windshield a little bit, and run the cord up there. That all sounds fine, but we're going to this pillar inside, so we need to remove this guy, and I feel like it's better to remove this first and then run our wire through there afterwards so we have everything opened up. So next we're going to remove this. So to get this out to mount the switch right here we need to remove these caps. There's a 10 millimeter bolt underneath each of those. We also have to remove the speaker grill. So you're going to want to use little pry tools like this, preferably plastic so we don't scratch things up too bad. And then just give it a little pry up and you'll feel clips like that pop. I think there's four or five of them under here. go and these caps are going to pop in mainly the same way just like so and we can see our bolt hopefully you can see that you're on my head cam so I can't see what you're seeing hopefully it's helpful a little boom and that's all out now we're going to remove this corner cowl piece it's a 40 torx which if you have your jeep kit you should have that in there Okay, let me just 
sneak that guy out like so. And now I'm curious. Where is that? Where does that connect to? Hmm. Figure that out another day. I think now I'm going to run my control wire over to this point. At some point, we got to bring down the windshield a little bit. I think you got to take the tops off. And I just, with the weather, I want to spend as little time in that position as possible. So this wire here is our control wire, and we're going to do everything we can to make it a nice, neat route. I'd really love to actually get it inside this channel. I'm not sure exactly how it pops open. You'd think these clips right here. It's a tight fit here, but there's a gap you can get your fingers in on that side, so I feel like it's possible. Okay, plan B is just to sneak between these two pieces. So we're going to send this guy through this little foamy through. big the gap is on this side. I feel like that clip you should be able to push and pull this out. Alright, whatever. Okay, so can I sneak under here? This guy in behind. Wearing a headlamp doing this has got to be one of the most aggravating things I've ever had to do. Okay, so we're making our connection back at the power module. We're going to let this guy I don't know if he's supposed to go down there like that, but I kind of like it. Out so much. 
double check to make sure those aren't getting pinched once we tighten these down. Okay, got it all hidden back there, and really pretty well, I mean, you gotta get down low down here to see that that wire is back there, I'm happy with that. Now we gotta go in through here, I'm guessing there's gonna be extra wire, I'm gonna ball up anything that's extra and put it right in this pocket, it seems like a good hidey hole for it. Let's figure out this windshield, I've never done this part before. So for the windshield, we're just cracking it open enough to get our wires run. You don't want to lay it all the way down with the windshield wipers still connected because you could damage them. I still think these tops are going to come off. But we're going to at least take the bolts out first and see what happens. So you have a bolt here, right behind the visor, right there, and then the exact same ones on the passenger side. We're using our 40 Torx, the same that we used for that cowl piece. this guy oh. definitely gotta take these off oh the joys of being four feet tall let's get this wire run so we can get these things back on Okay, I guess in the channel they want you to go in is through here. Now this is definitely my least favorite part because I don't know exactly where they want you to go with this. I guess that's right. I guess. Well, that's something that might be played with later. I'm just going to wrap this all up here and be able to put that corner piece back on. Now it's time to play with our grab handle. First we need to remove this guy. That's where our switch is going to go. So we'll just kind of push him in there. See we got this little triangle on the back. So we got to feed that through. And that's removed. Now we need to drill a hole right in here that's big enough for this to come through. The instructions say 20 millimeter. I'm just going to grab a step bit, step bit, try and center it as much as I can, and... Oh, walkie walkie. See if that's enough for us. And it is.
perfect fit, if I do say so myself. Now the problem is, it was big enough for the one piece, but not big enough for the other. So we gotta go bigger than that. Okay, I understand now. Gotta make it big enough for this other collar. Okay. Now line up our little tab. Like so. Just keep going with it. Go in, go out, go in, go out. Let this thing flat in there before we get that so then that can lay just like so. This got back in place like boom and then let's get our switch in. Boom! <laughs> Alright, back at the little brain box here. We still have to hook up the positive and the negative to the battery. Then we also have this red wire, which I'll have to look at the directions, but I'm pretty positive. It would go to an ignition on, so this would automatically come on with the ignition and then off when you turn it off. Now, if you don't hook that up, it'll just always have power, and you saw the top button is a power button, so you can manually turn it on and off. The benefit of that is you may want something that keeps running, so you'll have to decide the best setup for you. So first I want to hook up this negative cable. We're going to see how clean we can do it, if we can swing it under here. Just like so, and come over to that stud right there. That gets our letter. Okay, so our negative's hooked up. Now we got to hook up the positive. hook this up and the low battery light on that thing starts flashing at first I'm thinking what is <laughs> what did I just do no okay it's fine <laughs> Oh, we can see it's lit up. Look at that. Got it on blue. We can turn it off, turn it on. Now, I did see somewhere where you can change the backlight color and the brightness. I'm not going to go over that. It's got to be in the instructions. You'll figure it out. Maybe a different video. You can see they change colors. Let me turn different ones on. We can hear the relays clicking. If I stop talking, you'll be able to hear it. It's very cool when you're hooking. Now, when you're hooking up any of your accessories, you're just pulling out these plugs, running the wire through, and then each one you got your positive and negative, and it says switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four. You have your 40 amp relays, you have your 30 amp fuses, so you can't go over 30 amps depending on what you have. You may want to get a smaller fuse, a 10 or a 15, depending on what you're powering. 
I'm not going to use this guy. So I'm going to cap off this end just in case and tuck him up underneath here so you never even see him. And that's it. That is how you install a VO switch. There it is. Thanks for watching.